Jesus, on the journey today, stops at a big field of playing. And all the people gather around him, and while they are there, he begins talking to them about how they should live their lives, of who they should be. And in the passage from the Sermon on the Plain I chose today, I focused on the part, be merciful as your Father is merciful. Because I think that's a good thing for us to think about as we think about how do we live our lives together. So is there a story in the Gospel of Luke that reminds you of that? That talks about being merciful. Well, it's a little later on in chapter 10. And in that chapter, Jesus is again out amongst the people walking when a young man comes up to him and asks, what can I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus asks them, well, what have you done? And they talk about love, about loving God, about loving neighbors, about loving themselves. And the man asks him, but who is my neighbor? And now you know the story, right, that comes. After he asks that question, Jesus tells a story and he says, a man was traveling, and in the mountain region, he was set upon by robbers who beat him up and left him for dead. And while he was lying there on the ground, the pastor, she was approaching and she saw him, but she went to the other side of the road and went right on by ignoring the man lying there. And then one of the council members came along and saw that man lying there and again looked at that man and, and passed by on the other side. But then, since it's Fremont, an Afghani refugee is walking down the road and sees the man there, sees the man, and stops. Stops and bandages his wounds, cleaning them with wine, caring for him until he is cared for enough that he can put him on, well, in our story, in his car, <laughs> and drive him to some place where he will be taken care of. And the man, the Afghani refugee, pays for those bills and tells the people taking care of him that he will be back to check up on them, to check up and see how the man is. And then Jesus turns to the person he is talking to and says, so who is the neighbor? And that man says, the one who showed mercy. Mercy is something that Jesus finds very important and practices throughout his time with us and even to this day, mercy. That idea that when you see someone, you stop. You have compassion for them. And you help them. When you think about being merciful, what do you think of in that description? I mean, I was thinking, this is a good passage to talk about what does it mean to be a good dad, right? Because how many of our dads notice when we really want them, right? Because each of us as children have different ways of telling our dads that we need them, right? Some of us become annoying, right? We jump all over them. We pick at them until they stop to realize that we just wanted their attention, right? Others 
of us, the quiet ones, may appear in the room and sit near them without saying a word. But on the dad's side, the dad is supposed to stop, right? It's supposed to stop and see that that child in front of them is asking for something, is wanting something from them. And then they look at them and have compassion. I mean, that's another way of saying have mercy. Have compassion for them. So when they finally got your attention in the way they wanted their attention, your job as the dad is to listen, right? To hear what they are saying and not saying. To figure out what it is they need from you. To show that compassion and care that the Samaritan showed. That Jesus showed with everyone he encounters. And then good dads move to the next stage, right? which is to bind up the wounds, to do whatever is the next phase that the kid needs, to provide the help or encouragement, the right words, or sometimes just the hug that they need so that they can get on with their lives. So how do we be merciful? So I googled a bunch of stories, so I'll share a couple examples with you. What does it mean to be merciful? To be merciful is to show compassion for someone. So in 1995, in Ann Arbor, Michigan, which is a big college town, right? In Ann Arbor, the Ku Klux Klan, because this is 1995, it's not what's happening now. 1995, and people who were in the Ku Klux Klan were shunned at that point, okay? They decided to hold a parade in Ann Arbor by the college. But because it's a college town, there was an alternative protest that was as big or bigger than the protest of the Nazis. During that parade, one of the people who was covered in swastikas, tattoos, and was clearly in the Nazi side of the parade, decided to cross the line through the police barrier into the other side. And because mobs are not kind, the people on the other side started chasing him. And when they caught him, they started beating him. And when they caught him and were beating him, this young girl, an 18-year-old, a black 18-year-old, jumped on top of him to protect him and save his life. And when the crowd saw that, they stopped and moved away and left. And that young woman, when that story was shared all around, one day while she was walking through the campus, a young man came up to her and asked to thank her, to shake her hand. And he said, it was my father that you saved that day. That, that that generation of hate was broken because her act helped to change that son's opinion of people. Mercy. There's another story told that comes to us in 2015 from a Hindu village a Muslim village in India, which has one Hindu family. And in the neighboring town, 
a Muslim man had been having an affair with a Hindu woman and he was killed. And the Hindu people decided to move to that village where the Muslims were living and destroy them, to kill them and beat them and get rid of them. But in the Muslim village, there lived one Hindu woman. And she took as many Muslims into her house and hid them under all the furniture and in the, to keep them safe. 10 to 20 Muslims were in her house and she went outside and drove the crowd away, saving the lives of those people. She showed mercy. How do we live out what Jesus is telling us? To be merciful as our Father is merciful. How do we take that to heart so that when we see, when we see, because that's the first step, right? This is what Samaritan teaches us. When we see someone who is in trouble, who is in need, who is in danger. We then are to act with compassion. To act with mercy and help them to experience a life where people care and take care of you, right? That's what the Samaritan teaches us. That in those moments when we, our hearts are moved and we are moved by compassion, we are invited to bring relief, to, to bring comfort, to bind up the wounds of those who are injured, to take care of them however we take care of them. Following Jesus isn't easy, but it's the best thing we have out there. It shows us what it means to be truly human. And Jesus invites us to be merciful as God is merciful, to love as God loves. Because it's easy to only care about the people who care for you. I mean, that's what Jesus says in this passage, right? That even those we most dislike, those sinful people, love those around them. Do good to those around them. Lend to those around him. But Jesus challenges us to do good, to love, and to lend to those we think of as our enemies. And not those far away enemies, the ones that we hear about on the news, but the ones in our lives. The ones in our lives that we find whatever it is that they rub us wrong. To have mercy on them. To be merciful the way that God is merciful. Amen.